Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Game 3 conclusion of Sig Trust versus Execration, the winner at bracket finals of the Mr. Cat Invitational, our second to last day of coverage here on Moonduck TV. It's been a pleasure so far. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the glory of all things Mr. Cat? Facebook.com slash Mr. Cat Invitational, Mr. Cat Invitational.com, even Mr. Cat.com. So many cat portals. How do we keep up? Visit all of them. Show them your cat love. Ryan, what's going on, man? How you feeling coming into game three? Yeah, they've just picked Tide. They've just first picked Tide, haven't they? They sure have. First that, pick Tide. Just, they, just, they just don't care. They, they just first pick Tide. Why even? I, I just wish that I could be that brave. <laughs> that in the face of Drow Ranger, they've decided they've had enough. They're just going to... Tide? What, why, okay. Yep. No, that's something people pick. I, I, I don't know. Execration of push the boat out. So yeah. far, the boat's gone missing and will never be seen again. Well, this time, Sig will have a go with the Drow Ranger and a Vengeful Spirit alongside. Um, didn't work for Lakel's last game. Going to try it again here. Maybe the double auras, the two pretty ladies, will, will be enough to make it happen. I don't know. Execration without much hesitation said, yeah, Winter Wyvern. Worked well last time, and it really makes sense. What does Drow do well? She buffs up her team with damage. Winter Wyvern, give them, a, give them a, a taste of their own medicine. You know, Mary Poppins style. Spoonful of sugar and shit. It's quite good. Oh, come on. So, I think the... Really I like the Venge Drow, because I think the main downfall that Sigtrust had in their last game was they had this axe going with the Abaddon, and then the axe didn't get any farm, and then he was pretty much a liability, because he was taking farm away from the Storm Spirit and the Drow instead of adding pressure to the map and making Execration less likely to go for them. So, picking up the Avenge with the Drow means that they've already guaranteed that they've got a hero that's good with the Drow Ranger, and they've got a good support early on which fits in with their draft. And they don't necessarily have to worry about allowing their offlaner to have a good time, because they can reflexively pick their offlaner in response to what Execration have. And I think, overall, that's a better position for them to be in, given their playstyle, because they are very, very dependent on how well Lakels does. Um, so I, I think that removing themselves from being so attached to the bot lane already is quite important. And I also mm -hmm. noticed that they've been drow all three, they've been dire all three games, mm -hmm. and they every each game they want to pick a draft that has an early advantage, and then it gets Roche in the mid game, and then looks to take Rex around thirty minutes. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them pick something very very similar to the last two games in terms of draft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, bringing up the first pick, uh, Radiant versus Dire type, type thing is actually very interesting right now. Pretty much every tournament, uh, I think maybe except Global Grandmasters is the most recent one in, in memory that doesn't do this, where it alternates choice rather than the hard lock. You always switch who's on which side and who gets first or second pick. And from what I've seen, at least in the games that I've had to admin, it's been a fairly even spread of teams that prefer first or second pick, and I think most teams are still preferring Dire for the Roche advantage, at least that I've seen in SEA, but uh, there are teams that are choosing Radiant for various other advantages around the map that don't involve uh, Roshan, so the jungle setup, I guess, slightly more efficient, you know, what have you. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what's better right now, first or second pick. I, I was starting to think second pick might actually be better because you get two heroes locked in in tandem, but not the case. I mean, Execration chose uh, first pick here. They had the option to take the second, and they passed on it. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, Invoker pick coming out from Sigtrust. Uh, like, he's just... Jabs has had enough. He doesn't want to play any more Storm Spirit today. Um, Execration, obviously, they don't ban out. They, they feel comfortable playing against that. So Execration, in, re in response to the Invoker, they pick up the Wisp. So they could pick up almost anything with this Wisp. Uh, they've got a good team already. Most um, like Wisp Tiny drafts you used to see always had something like a Tide Hunter or like a Slardar or something like that. Some, some AoE team fighter that could you could really play around. Mostly it was actually heroes that had strong ultimates. So you always had to worry about, do I go on the Tide or do I try and find the Wisp? If I go on the Tide, will I get ravaged and then Wisp Tiny will TP in? If I go on one of the supports, will the Tide TP? That kind mm. of thing. So I kind of like this Wisp pick. Yeah. I, I like third picking it as opposed to first phasing it because they didn't really seem to know what they wanted to do with the first phase pick. But now they have a lot more way, ways to make their draft mm -hmm. work around the first two picks. Yeah, absolutely. And now they'll 
get to pick this Wisp partner in a much more reactionary state, whereas before they had to third pick the Morphling nice and early, and now they, they can kind of decide what they want uh, based on if Sig Trust grabs their third core. They'll be looking for an off later as well as their second support to go with the Venge. I'm kind of curious what they have in mind here. Dark Seer is still in the pool. That is usually a pretty highly sought after uh, offlaner, often first banned or first picked in this region. They might consider. I I feel that if they go for Dark Seer, that they would be it would do decently in lane, but I don't think that they would have much to really fight with. Um, like they wouldn't have any really like big cooldowns that they could pop. They don't have um, that much to disable. I think they don't usually favor Dark Seer. So they're going to go for the Wish Doctor, so they're going to leave their off lane for last pick, so right. they're kind of going to be, yeah, tiny pickup, all right. Classic. That's not unexpected. Classic, and pretty good against the Drow Ranger. Tiny with the Wisp taxi service can start the fight in an ideal location. Once you get up on the Drow's face, it can be pretty good. Now, there are some new tools to deal with this. I think this is a game where Drow might need to prioritize that Hurricane Pike a little bit earlier than she otherwise would, would normally like. Um but does have some options here. Execration have the kind of draft that I feel that if the game started at 10 minutes into the game and everyone just had like average farm, that it would be a very, very good draft. But I feel that their draft kind of lacks any kind of mid game or like early game presence. Mm. Um, as long as Sigtrust have some kind of hero that can get quite a bit out of the bot lane and then their supports have free room to move and pressure the wisp tiny, then I think that Execration are liable to fall very, very far behind it in farm. And if this tiny doesn't have a good start, doesn't get like a fast blink dagger, um, and the invoker is a very scary hero compared to the tiny, then I think they're kind of lacking in ways to really get going in the mid game because they don't really have many ways to force a fight. They just have to like relocate in and hope they get a good ravage at this point. So I want yeah. to see what the last hero is really like some kind of safety net that will allow them to take um, decent fights, maybe get pick-offs. I'm not going to say any here in particular because I hmm. I don't really know what they're going to go for, but I would like to see some hero that doesn't really have to farm too much and can be active on the map. Okay. Well, Execration will have to pick first, and they ban out the Dark Seer, so... You have, you have indicated. Something they were concerned about, even if Sigtrust wasn't thinking about it. I do think Sigtrust needs some kind of a, a frontliner for that offlane, which is also where Dark Seer can help play that role at least a little bit. Uh, now for Execration, carry that wants to fight, doesn't need too much farm. Five seconds remaining. They've got a bit of time to choose. Mm. Um, Oh, I need to get the, the hero list up now. I need to have a guess. Oh, I've got a bit of time. 30 seconds. I don't have a good guess. My brain just keeps telling me Medusa, and I think the chances of them picking that are about 3%. Slark, they take right. the Slark. Okay, so a, a good mobile carry against the Drow Ranger. Kind of what I brought up last game, but they went down a different route. All right, so I think they realize that their bot lane is going to be really, really, really strong. Um, and pretty much nothing Sigtrust at this point can pick will um, interfere with that because it's, there's already a wife in there. They can potentially have Wisp rotating down. So Slark is going to have decent farm in the early game provided nothing catastrophic happens. Um, and also he's he's in theory good against Drow and he's okay against Invoker and stuff like that because he's he's not very easy to burst. He can Dark Pact off a lot of the silences. So I I I it's I think it's an okay pick. I personally don't like the Slark pick, but Sigtrust go pick up the axe again. They feel that they can right. get it done. Well, it's a it's a front liner, but I I don't know if it's sustainable enough. Maybe they'll try this two one two setup again. Last time it was just all the lanes failed because of it, and they could have at least saved the Drow maybe more effectively if they had secured the safe lane. I'm a little bit nervous about this Axe pickup. I, I really liked the Sigtrust lineup before then. The Drow damage with the Invoker, also pretty scary, makes his mid lane presence a little bit easier against uh, the presumed Wisp Tiny. I don't know, this is sort of an interesting draft on both sides. I, I think this one, to me, this feels like it really comes down to execution. Like you were talking about, does Sigtrust get that early game that they need, or does somehow Execration manage to get decent lanes and then just continue to pummel the Drow Ranger? 
think the last three or four days of Mr. Cat, Drow's win rate has probably been like 20%, something like that. There was one day where in the two best of three series, I think she was picked five out of six games and won one out of four, something like that. She's really, or one out of five, whatever it was. She, the, the, the teams in this region really seem to want to make it work, but uh, have trouble executing with it, it seems like. Yeah, they... Sick Trust have been picking it quite a lot. I think earlier in this tournament, they were picking drafts that look very much like this one. And they had a decent win rate, but nothing amazing. Yeah. The Axe is starting off with Winlace, so he really... Okay, no, he's going to get the stout. Okay. No. Hold on. He doesn't know what he wants. No, Windlace. Back to the Windlace we go. Sell it again? Stout? Maybe? Will it be Abba? Oh, yeah, sold okay. it again. Come on, what's it going to be? Stout Shield. Alright, sell it? No. Alright, there we go. So, he's going to start off with the Stout Shield and Ring of Protection after much deliberation. So, is anyone <laughs> TP to lanes to get wards out? No, it's just going to be Witch Doctor just running straight down middle. He's going to snap the ward in the middle of the lane. So you really do want to know exactly where the Wisp is at all times if you're laning against Wisp Tiny Middle. Um, Invoker has... he's got a pretty hard time against that lane because um, at any point they can just go on you and you don't really have the damage or escape to dissuade them from diving you. Yeah. So he needs to really be protected in the first... well, honestly, the first six minutes, I'd say. Because he, he's liable to die at any point before double forge spirits, and even then, uh, it's always a scary lane for Invoker. But the good thing is he can move out of the lane, access his own ancients and jungle, and pressure the tower when the Wist Tiny leave. So I'd hope to see this Witch Doctor secure the lane for him. I am very excited to see the Jabs Invoker. Again, maybe worth reiterating, there is a stand-in on the side of Sig Trust. They've rotated their uh, their positions. Jabs normally a position four player on this team, now playing mid. He played Storm Spirit first two games with. Mixed results and a fairly decent individual showing, at least in game one here. He's got the new next level Invoker Immortal, the ultra rare. This thing is sick nasty. Surely you've seen it. Yeah, my friend bought one. It cost like 86 pounds or something. Yeah, I ridiculous. believe it. The, the ultra rares are, are act they're usually pretty cool, and they are indeed ultra rare. I think it's one in 500 or one in 1,000, something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. They're pretty hard to yeah. snag. If you are in G1, you are one lucky bastard. I don't play Invoker, but if I did, I would I would want this set. Yeah, I've been playing Invoker a bit recently, and I'm just sitting around. I'm just happy having my, like, the wizard hat thing, you know? Oh, I don't yeah. have this fancy set, you know? I've just got my wizard hat walking around. Harry Potter and shit. RR, yeah. taking a lot of damage up top. Forced to use the salve. He will survive through that level one right-click battle, but, uh, yeah. The aura ladies. Doesn't even have that first point in Vengeance Aura yet, and already the right-clicks hurt. So this lane isn't going too bad. So I'm just looking at mid lane. Jabs is just going to farm under tower. He's getting full XP, honestly, or full farm at least. They're not really managing to zone him out with the threat of Avalanche yet. So well, probably when Tiny hits level 3 and Wisp gets the rune, then they can see some aggression coming out. Yeah. But until then, I think the main lane to look at is going to be top lane. Dude, this Tide just is to see, crippled. Yeah. The Sunstrike just connected. He'll have two Tangos left, and he just... Walks back with his stupid scuba mask. He's going to go swimming in the well. Yeah, he didn't start with Iron Talon, which honestly I'm surprised at because there's no real hope of getting that much farm versus a Drow VS lane because yeah. they just have so much physical damage. Like, it doesn't matter if you have level like 1 Anchor Smash because they can just damage through it. Like, even if, yeah. and you have to like walk up to them to land it as well. So it's just like, it's not really feasible to expect to get levels or farm there by not starting Iron Talon. Yeah, absolutely. Two minute rune comes out, one apiece. Oh, Ven, she tried, but. Oh, yeah, up top. Yeah, so, and now they use that, and Tiny just has an excuse to get bottled up by Wisp, so they get that kill on Ven at no extra cost. Oh, wow. So, Abba gets a solo, gets a solo kill, kill. On Slark. That? Sorry, I missed that one, that's unexpected. Alright, Abba's had enough of being the axe that doesn't get farm. He's just decided everyone must die. He, he almost gets two here. Chemo gets low. Abba doesn't get the RNG oh, he spin he was hoping for. And now the Slark connects. Okay. He'll try and TP home. And he'll make yeah. it Slark without the damage. Back mid. Toss back. Invoker into the tower. Jabs. They should secure a kill. Tiny so being tossed back into the tower is the number one way all invokers die in this matchup. It is incredibly annoying. You are 280 base movement speed. You don't have boots, and you find out the Tiny and Wisp both have boots, and it's three minutes, and you are dead. Yeah. This has happened to me many times, and honestly, it makes me just a bit sad.
<laughs> if I have to be honest. Tide, but Tide is now going to get some XP. He's got level 2 without having to jungle for it, which is quite nice. Yeah. Lakels is sitting at 15 CS, so not the best farm in the world, but he's sitting even with both cores of Execration. So I think this early game is going pretty well for Execration, honestly, simply because of how well the mid lane is going. Um, the Witch Doctor is sitting at level 1. The Invoker is not doing too... He's, he's doing okay. He doesn't have boots yet. Um, oh, is Wisp going to fall here? Yep, Sunstrike connects. That was Very interesting. Nice. Like, uh, that's just, I think that's just a misplay. You can't really walk that, that far up. He knew that Witch Doctor was there, so... Just a bit curious. Although, okay, look at Botley. So, a minute ago, Abba gets the solo kill. And then he's level 4 and the Suck's level 2. But now he's come back to the lane, and Suck's level 4, and Abba's still level 4. He hasn't really farmed that much in the meantime. I think that... Even given that solo kill, this bot lane's going fine for Execration. The Wyvern's getting decent levels, he's sitting at level 3. He's doing better than the Venge, much better than the Witch Doctor. Oh wow, Axe almost Abba's grabs gonna Nando. Abba's this stack. This stack is his and his alone. Yeah, It's not even a stack, it's just a hard camp. Still, but he really wants it. He's happy to go for it, and as we're looking at Axe down bottom, they're going to get another kill on Venge. Looks like a battle for the top rune. Oh, Tiny's got a 4 minute drum, he's got it on the career. Like, That's this, pretty good. This was tiny is gonna. If it keeps going at this rate, I don't think this game's gonna last too long. They're gonna get relocated. Oh, oh they, they might finally shut this down. No, the Sunstrike no. connects, and that's it. The cask has nowhere to go, and they can't follow up. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Axe as well as the Slark will go blow for blow. Axe gets credit for the kill first, so actually gets a little bit of an advantage there. Yeah, so that's it's good for the Wyvern, it's good for the Axe. I think the Axe being. The Axe is having a way better time than he was before, though. So this game, I think, is gonna be. Um, much more interesting than the first game, if, and I think it's going to be way more closely contested than the second game. So I'm going to be interested to see how this plays out. Tiny in some trouble here in the mid lane. He drops Tiny is under attack. Connects on three, but Fei Mao with a stun. Looks like they'll have more than enough damage to bring down Abed, and they keep their Observer Ward alive. There was a Sentry down, but nobody inbound to scout it, and the Sentry will expire. So a small two pronged victory there for the Rady or for the Dire rather, Vengeful Spirit getting some vengeance. Ends the streak and gets a little bit of extra money for that gank. He might actually be able to buy an item now. That's good. Oh, I, items are nice to buy. I do like. He's just but a slow he's start. Got a bit, you know, yeah. <laughs> he's got he's got his clarity and his boots and his smoke. He's I'm happy. still impressed at how well Abba's done in this bottom lane. Though I really thought Axe would just get zoned oh, out and up. shut if down gets, again, but he's he in on Nando. Him. Yeah, he's just forcing pounces to be honest. Like now, this Slark, he's gonna have. He can't farm the next wave. He's just gonna have to dark pack this small camp and then. Be content with that. And Axe knows this, and he's just going to walk over. If he, if he, oh, uh, I guess Abs. he assumed the Slark went back to base. He'll live through it. This cask bouncing around like crazy, but the Sun Strike not on the money. Toss in. Jabs will be able to survive through it. Now the main pitfall here that Execution can fall into is just being content to sit here with the Wisp Tiny and not increasing their farm. But they do have two stacks available in the jungle. They, all they really need to do is transition this mid lane into either something that stops the drow from farming or something that means they get so farmed with the wisp tiny that even if drow was farmed that they wouldn't be able to do anything to stop them. Oh, Nando, he tries to leap up top. He gets knocked back down and Abba gives him an easy dunk. That was really weird. He needed to pounce into the tree line, not try to jump up that hill that you cannot uh, path into. Yeah, Abba's now going to go for the vanguard. He's... He's decided he's having a good game. Abba. Oh, pardon me. Abed. Able to split. Does not take the Sun Strike, but they still kill the Wisp. But and needs he to be might careful. not be in the clear here. He lingers around a bit too long. He could have just turned tail and run, but instead, he has to fog it. He does actually live. Slark misses the pounce, and TNT will live after providing a lot of sustain here onto his Invoker. Jab's actually able to stay in the lane. Now back down bottom. Axe cutting behind the tower. Uh oh. Aggression onto Chemo. Misses the Berserker's call. It's close, but can't quite get it this time. Yeah, from this point on, Axe can free farm. Um, they don't really have any way of stopping him, apart from... Okay, Invoker, you've gone a bit too far forward. Kills everywhere. Is he going to get a return kill? Almost oh, gets Nando. So it connects. He's in just a sliver of HP. TNT might also live. Action actually happening. Three heroes come out of that gank with 100 HP each. Yep. And down bottom, Abba putting a lot of pressure on. Meanwhile, in the top... Lakel's able to finish off the tower. So all three, uh, three lanes really erupting with some sort of uh, fighting.
Prowess and Sig Trust, they benefit big. They have a 2k gold lead now, about 1500 experience. One tower going their way. Tiny, not really in the lead anymore. Drow's closed the gap, and even this axe now is catching up with him. Oh, Whiskey, wow. You have died. So, Invoker's. Honestly, he's not doing too bad, um, given what happened to him earlier on. Uh, yeah. he's, the kills on Tiny and that kill on Wisp have kind of pushed him back into contention. He's actually sitting behind the Slark, which I'm quite surprised at, but Slark, obviously, even if he does die a few times, or more than a few times, he can get farmed with Dark Pact in the jungle, so... Abba's just gonna, gonna guard. look at him, threaten to shout a bit, you know? I like this, though. Now he can be even more manly. He doesn't have to worry about the Slark at all. 1300 HP. There's basically no way the Slark can kill him at this point without help. Yeah, they, they, the only way they kill him is Tiny Combo. Yeah. So, and then that's your Tiny Wisp rotating in to kill the Axe. So I really do like this pickup. And notice how both teams have gigantic Ancient stacks. So those two things are going to be the big point of contention here. Abba's going to get a start on his. The Vanguard is necessary, obviously, to do this stack. No, he wasn't quite in range to do most of it. <laughs> the healing from Witch Doctor makes this a little bit easier, though. He'll just back out. Yep. He's going to wait for his next call, and then hopefully do this without falling over. Now, if they can find a way to get a pick off, take out this tier 1 tower mid, and then open up the enemy ancients, that would... If they get the enemy ancients, this game crippling. Is, becomes absolutely yeah. obscene. And I, I think it is actually within their grasp to try and contest it. Tide is the big one that's going to kill it. Tiny doesn't have an Ags quite yet. He can't kill it quickly. And Tide doesn't really kill it that fast either. He can do it reliably and sustainably with Anchor Smash and Kraken Shell, but he can't burst it down the same way Axe can like that. So. Axe is becoming more farm than God. He's just sitting at level 10, 5.3k net worth at 10 minutes. He's almost got his Blink Dagger. Ooh. Oh, Tiny's going to get away. They might catch the Wisp here. Oh, the Sunstrike doesn't connect. Nice and they're not going to get the kill. And they actually... So, I think the Wisp, did he just deny that haste room? Is that what was there? Or I, it, I didn't see. I'm sorry. Was it a bounty? Um, that was weird. Uh, Venge got the bounty bot, so it was a real rune top. So yeah, I think they denied the, the haste, because if Invoker had picked that up, he could have just chased the Wisp down there. He's not level yeah, I 6, think, can't relocate. I don't think Invoker should have missed that Sunstrike, though. If that was a cask, like, you can just press Sunstrike as you see the cask going, and if you correctly see where the cask is going to hit him, you will get it. Um, a little bit. So they move into Roche, though, and this seems... The scan, and they know this is happening, but unfortunately there's an axe with the net worth of I don't know, something very rich. Small um, country, Luxembourg. He almost has Blink, too. This is an 11 minute Blink Tranquil Vanguard Axe. That is a scary timing. He'll even uh, double stack the Ancients now, get a little more farm going his way. What do we have for Execration? Do they have any big items yet? Slark's still very crippled, not even halfway to a Shadow Blade. Tiny has his drums, another Wind Lace, but outside of that. He's not really too scary yet either. Wisp, not even level 6. Getting close, but still not even a relocate threat that Sigtrust have to worry about. The nice thing about this game for Sigtrust, even though Lakels hasn't been given the Ancient Stack, hasn't been given that much farm priority, he's allowed to farm almost freely. He gets to farm lanes, uh, Execration can't really pressure him, and Invoker's been given free reign of his own jungle, and also the top lane. So... All their cores are going to get some level of farm, whereas if you look on Execration, their Tiny is pretty much the only hero that can really impact the game. Their Slark is the hero that's being given the safe farm on the bot lane and in his own jungle, and the Tide just isn't farming. Link, He's... reveal from Abba, it's going to catch Abed. No way to save him. Wisp had the and relocate, they get the bonus but wisp too. can't so do it fast enough. Get oh. Damage on the tier 1 and a free Wisp kill. Yep, is there anything he gets that the tether over to can the tether wyvern. to? Maybe the Wyvern is close enough. Jump on Chemo. Or maybe not. Berserker's call on the mark. Misses the call, but that's okay. They still find it. Chemo walks too far forward. Caught by Frost Arrows. Nice oh. winner's curse. Is it enough to keep that him alive? Was, was really sure good. Is. Nicely so, done. But I think they're still going to get the tier one. They have Vegas still. Oh, Sunstrike. Oh, so close. Invoker's going to be kicking himself. Yeah, that's just one of those sunstrikes. Like, hey. you don't you don't really mind if it's really far off, but if it's really close and you barely missed it, then yes, whose ancient, ancient stack, stack just got killed by the dire. They might punish for this. Ravage connects on four. Very nice. Abba will get tossed out. Finds the kill there. Aegis is utilized as Drow Ranger also falls. I think they get Lakels twice here, most likely. Swap from Fey Mal. Now Lakel's on the low ground. He's going to start laying in Frost Arrows. This cask doing a lot of work. Axe goes in on Kimo on one side. Abed caught by some Sun. Strun Sunstrike connects, but they split the damage. 
and it won't be enough for a kill. Fey Mao survives as he makes it to the high ground, and the tide gets turned on by the drow. Now Kimo locked in the trees. Abba finds him with the Berserker's Call. Culling Blade still on cooldown. Gets off the cold embrace. Two seconds for the slam dunk. Decapitated. Very nice. So, Sig Trust clean it up. Apart from Axe having to buy back, that was the absolute best case scenario for Sig Trust, wasn't it? They Pretty get the much. ancient stack, they kill two cores. The Slark is stuck bottom with minimum HP, so he's going to have to evacuate. I mean, I, the, the only downside is that Axe was the one that got most of that unreliable gold from the Ancients, and then he proceeded to die yeah, right away. That, so. so they didn't get much of the... But they the denied gold, they it, did so up. it's still huge. That's Yeah, I think Execration now, they are very, very, very dependent on getting pickoffs on this drow. That's the way they're going to have to play. The good thing is they have a Stark Shadow by coming soon, and they do have a Tiny who... He doesn't have Dagger quite yet, but he's going to have Dagger in the next few minutes if he keeps farming like this. Although I don't even know if they want to go dagger, really, because if he does go dagger, and even if they do get a few pickoffs, is a tiny with just drums dagger going to be able to? Um, yeah, but what's go the alternative? The like shadow blade, echo saber, running the eggs. I, mean, I think he get? has to. I think he has to go dagger because otherwise they have almost no way of getting on top of the drow outside of a ravage catching him well, on the fringes. Tide is close to dagger himself. It looks like about sixteen hundred gold. I, I think if Tide goes dagger in this game, they're not gonna. They just won't survive. I think he needs to go mech. And if they don't get a mech, they're going to have massive trouble surviving. Oh, now Although the Shadowblade's could... up on Slark. Hmm. This is, this is tough, actually. So I kind oh, of agree He's going to walk in. Oh, they're smoked, and he, they know that something's up. They know smoke's broken. They ping it out. They sentry. They just miss him. And, there's a and sentry nothing's going to happen. Lakels well, is going to get caught, maybe. It's sort of a wash there. He, he breaks the smoke, but that's also the reveal of the Shadow Blade. And they know exactly Axe, what's first up. First person near him is the Wyvern. If he kills the Wyvern at the start of this... No, they don't know he's there. Almost. X could have blinked over blind and guessed, but high risk, low reward on that. Down bottom, Whoa. now Fey Mal bumps Avengers right in. into him. Eats the Avalanche, now the swap. Winter Wyvern gets off the curse. Decent damage, but now the ult from Witch Doctor brings him down, and it's a one for nil the other way. Sig Trust, gotta be happy with that. They've got five heroes here in the bottom, and they will pressure this tower. Execration getting in position to contest. They do have a Ravage. Slark on his way down now. Yeah, so Lakels is just going to whack at the tower, and they have no trade-off. They have no Tier 1 or Tier 2 tower. They're hitting on the side of Execration, so they have oh, to get a good fight. Nando, he gets caught right away. Abba, what a player. There's a Sentry Ward down, but the Slark completely unaware. He just got neutered, man. So that's his first reveal of his Shadow Blade to the enemy team. Oh well, the first time he's influenced an enemy. Officially, yeah. Member, yeah. <laughs> his first time he's joined a fight with it, and then immediately that happens to him. So, about Ooh. the Slark being the one to get them out of this tricky spot, I'm not sure that's going to happen. So Tiny's got his dagger, and he's just going to finish up a wand. It looks like. Um. So they need to get something with this dagger, honestly. And it, this is going to be the state of the game until the next Roche. And if they don't do something by the time that Sigtrust take the next Roche, they get another item on Drow, and they get maybe an Axe or a Blink on Invoker, they're going to be really, really hard-pressed to do anything. So they need to get something done in this time, and I don't know how they're going to do that. Nor I. This uh, gold gap is growing here. 7,500, uh, also 7,500 XP. Lakels, only a Yasha right now, 1,300 gold. He's not super farmed, but... Number one on net worth still, and pulling away from the pack. Nando, he needs to make some of these ganks work. He goes in onto jabs. This is a tough target to kill. Has to use the dark pact right away, but Abba's him. there. Catches him, and he'll have another dunk. Doesn't even need it. Counter Helix doing most of the work. Now Kimo swapped back, an easy two for nil, and it's another attempted gank from the Slark. Completely thwarted. Rather ambitious one at that. Invoker under the tower. Plenty of reaction from Sig Trust. I they must know that they're never going to kill him then. I mean, like, I, at best they were forcing a reaction, because Invoker, like, he's got... They must see he's got Sunstrike Meteor up, so Slark will take more damage than Invoker will. And yeah. Invoker will actually win that man fight. So, I think that was just a desperate attempt to kind of allow the top lane to get a pick-off. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of. I guess they but, weren't quite ready for Sigtrust to rotate all five straight away. I mean, honestly, Sigtrust right now, they just want to knock down towers. They're happy to group up and utilize their aura advantage. Uh, three points in that Vengeance aura right now, so... 
Yeah, staying as five is really not a, a big issue for them. They're biding their time till next Roche comes up. We'll have about 45 seconds till we see the RNG timer, and only one outer tower remains for execration. So now with that, it's even worse. Nearly a, a 10k net worth and experience lead. Just like that. So, but all is not yet lost. Luck, they can still get a fight. They do have Ravage. They've, honestly, they've been yet to use it yet. Um, mm. in a they used them one time. They, they caught on yeah, four yeah. to defend the Ancients. That was it. Yeah, so they need another meaningful Ravage where they can get a pick off on the Drow and then focus the supports at the start of the fight. Um, but I don't see the Slark really having a better time faring with the Axe. So I think the Slark just needs to make sure he's on the other side of the map from the Axe entirely for the most part of this game. Because if he's in the same team fight without the Axe being dealt with, it's not going to go well for him. I'll be honest. Slark, double damage rune. He's hungry. Looking for blood, but... Not going to find any in the water. Invoker just backs on up, plays it safe. Good positioning there. He's got his BOTs, so now he can split farm very reliably and join the party once the fight breaks out. The rest of Sig Trust all up top. Pressure in the tier two. BKB on the way uh, for Lakels. He's also not too far off. Slark looking to wrap around the backside. Double damage just about to expire. Might be able to get a little value out of it. Oh my gosh. He initiates into three. He's all by himself. Nando. That was ambitious, to say the least. Now they relocate. Tim's gets dropped almost immediately. Abed left all alone. He's trying to turn back the other way. He falls. It's another disastrous fight. Witch Doctor does get killed by his own team. Nice winner's curse, but in the end, a one for four and another abysmal initiation from the Slark. Yeah, I think the Slark is just... He's going in without vision of where the axe is or, like, being able to control him. It's just... He's just getting owned by the axe, I'll be honest. Like... The Tide is now sitting there being guardian of the high ground, but he doesn't really have any way to get that anything with Ravage. Yeah. And Kimo is just oh. going to... he's gone splat, hasn't he? He sure has. Ravage comes out from the Tide. Tentacles come flying. This is a dieback now for the Tiny as he hits the tide, deck. Tide, get in there, dude. Tide, Lakels. kill that. Lakels. No, Lakels. He's just too fast. He's got uh, the Alacrity on. And now, Nando, Nando out of the base. Nando just teepees in and pounces away. Uh, it's not looking good. Cheeky Nando, you little bastard. Well, melee barracks now. <laughs> Feel appropriated. They'll fall and... I mean, Execration, they're gonna hang in there a little bit longer. They won't GG out right now. But 15k net worth and experience. This is getting close to the end. Nando looking for something Nando. else, perhaps. Oh. Axe has decided to let him go. Okay, Abba. Is, he, is he gonna have a revenge? Here we go. He's blade mailed. He doesn't have oh, enough mana for the no. dunk, but they've got enough mana for a sun strike. They bait him in. Just leave him alone. He doesn't deserve this anymore. It's happened seven times. Every single one of his deaths is just this axe. It's a tough game for the fish boy. The wannabe murloc. He's he's on it, food it, stamps. Yeah, he is the food stamps. Poor Execration. A slightly de demoralizing series here. Still, good practice before Seattle. Woo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure this is really, really, really helping their confidence. And Abed down Abed bottom. Just gonna... Almost solo that by was... the Witch Doctor. Nice, nice move. Moves into the trees. But look, they make the, the uh, tiny TP back. Now Roche ripe for the taking. This will be a pretty safe under undertaking yeah. for uh, Sig. They just have BKB on Drow, and they have Ags on Invoker, and they're going to walk up the high ground. And there is going to be nothing that Execration can do to stop them. Yep. They can. You know, they have Ravage up in 40 seconds. Tide is... he doesn't have mech just yet. Slark is still got the same items. Tiny's got his blink, but needs to do something with it amazingly well. Yeah. The only way I see this going is if they start um, overextending, and then they get tossed back into tier 4s, and then they have the damage to kill people. But with Aegis on Drow and Ford Spirits up on Evoker, they don't even have to commit. Mm -hmm. So this is just looking a bit bleak. Yeah. And I wish I could say that there's something that Execration could do, but this is the point where a Drow strat is just a bit too powerful. Yeah, especially with Avenge on top of it. They've got that extra damage, and they will just siege from the low ground. Alacrity comes out, and, you know, it actually does not uh, increase movement speed. I kind of misspoke earlier. It's just attack speed and damage. As we'll see this initiation now onto the Tidehunter. He's got a Ravage. May well die before he can use it. Axe 
Pump fakes the dunk, still has it off cooldown. Tiny initiates the back line. Abba caught by the Winner's Curse, but there's just no damage. Abed's getting controlled like crazy. Ravage finally comes through. Nando gets in on Jabs. They almost find the kill, but he walks away. Oh, Jabs still alive, but the remaining members of Execration won't be for long. Sunstrike connects on the Tide. They will use the Aegis, but the Invoker is godlike. Lakelos comes back to life. It's a buyback from the Slark. He's going to go out of the base and the old wraparound. Jabs. Oh, he's got a sentry. Oh, he sees him. He sees him. Nando, Jabs, can he do no. it? He does actually end Nando the godlike streak. Catches someone. That's, I mean, that's something. 1,500 yeah. gold. He's and got... then he's dead. He's that's dead. a dieback. And now a buyback yeah. from the Invoker. GG. Sig Trust moving on to the grand finals. 29 to 8. Absolute domination. Game three of this series. Wow. The fact wow, is, wow, and wow. surprising is, this wasn't even the most convincing game in the series. Huh. So it's just like, this series was very, very interesting. And I think any any team which reliably picks Drow Ranger and goes for these kind of, we get a, we get first Roche, the second Roche, and then we take your racks, or we don't really do anything at all. Any kind of game with that is going to be extremely volatile. And I think that's been proved by this series. Yep. No, I, I can't argue with that one. Just uh, brutality. I, you know, Nando, he had a, a tough game in general. I, I, we were both thought the Axe would uh, take more pressure. That, that's, that's one of those games where I just want to go queue up some Axe pubs now. I mean, he made that look easy. He shut the Slark down so hard. And even after Nando was able to get the Shadow Blade, there were so many initiations where he charged in a little bit too early, a bit too aggressively, and he died almost immediately to the Axe, especially once the Blade Mail came out. Seemed like there was there was really nothing the Slark could do aside from just sit back and try and outfarm them or something. But against the Drow, that's just never really an option. Great draft, great execution from Sig Trust. We're going to go down to the lower bracket now. We've got WG Unity versus Mineski. That matchup scheduled to start in about a half hour's time. This was a pretty quick series, especially one that went all three games. So that will be our second set today. And then after that, there's just one day left of Mr. Cat coverage. Lower bracket finals and then the grand finals coming up tomorrow. So we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back. If you enjoyed this cast, give us both a follow on Twitter, at Zayori TV and at Rhyme, L-O-L. -L. Of course, at Moonduck TV to stay up to date with all things happening for the studio, as well as all things Mr. Cat. Sit tight, sit tight folks, because we've got more Dota 2 coming your way after this break.